Welcome also on my behalf. Very excited to be here today to talk about diversity and inclusion. My name is Julia and I'm the COO of Inclusive. Inclusive is a community with a mission to advance diversity and inclusion in working life. What we do is that in our community, we organize different kinds of events, we do different kinds of projects and campaigns, anything that links to support the mission of making working life more diverse and inclusive. But let's get started. What do we mean when we talk about diversity and inclusion? Starting from diversity, it simply means differences of who we are and where we come from. Uh, it can consist of demographic factors, experiential factors or cognitive factors. This can, for example, mean that different genders, different age, sexual orientation, nationalities, ethnicities, all sorts of factors, or what is our education or background. And when talking about diversity, it's also very important to understand intersectionality. With intersectionality, we mean that a person and person's identity can belo belong into several different groups. This means that when we consider just a tech industry, being a woman can already be a minority. And what if we also have then different factors, such as the person being a woman is also belonging to an ethnic minority, and for example, her sexual orientation is also belonging to a minority. All these together affect on what is our position and uh, how, how that affects also in the organizations. Then when talking about inclusion, inclusion is something that refers to fostering openness, psychological safety and sense of belonging. And inclusive culture is something that every single person is treated fairly, respectfully, and they have equal access to opportunities and uh, they can fully contribute, for example, to the organization and to the success of the organization. When we discuss inclusion, simply said, it means a sense of belonging. When we also compare inclusion with integration, there is a big difference as with integration, there can be people inside of a group, but in reality, they are just a separate group inside of this larger entity. But with inclusion, it means that every single individual can feel a sense of belonging and as they are. This is also a good reminder that inclusion is a subjective experience of every single individual. It means that also non-organization can say that we truly are inclusive. It really affects on how every individual in that organization feels. This is a quote that you might have heard before. It's a classic one from Werner Myers, who is an inclusion strategic at Netflix. I think it's a brilliant one to highlight the difference also between diversity and inclusion. When diversity is seen as being invited to the party, then inclusion on the other hand is being asked to dance. And what is also important to remember is that diversity doesn't stick without inclusion. So no matter how much effort organizations are also putting on hiring diversity, if there's no inclusion and inclusive culture, that diversity will walk away. And when we talk about DNI, it's also important to understand why, why is the topic 
so relevant? Why does it matter? Very simply said, diversity and inclusion builds better organizations. There is a ton of research to prove this claim that shows that organizations can be much more innovative, better in problem solving, better in decision making, and all in different ways also making financially better results. That same goes also with inclusive cultures. They also have a direct impact on how organizations are performing. Based on this Deloitte study, there is such high numbers as uh, that organization with an inclusive culture can be six times more likely to be innovative and agile. And such a high number as eight times more likely to also uh, achieve better business outcomes. When also talking that there's a lot of benefits of DNI, but there's also a lot of risks that organizations are facing if they're not taking DNI in account. First of all, DNI will affect on what kind of products what kind of services and what kind of technologies are we building and for whom? It might affect that without diversity, uh, we're designing, for example, products that are leaving out complete groups of people. Here I took an example of Google, uh, where they have built an AI that was found out that it actually is labeling every black people as gorillas. Secondly, there's also many risks that companies can face to their reputation, to their brands, and these can also affect on product pullbacks and have many different financial losses. Here I also took a couple examples from big tech companies, Uber and Apple, who has also been in the news of their uh, toxic or sexist in environments and cultures. And, and these kind of things affect also how people are seeing, seeing these brands. Then thirdly, also many of these risks can also affect on uh, also ethical side of making research or designing different products. And in worst case, these services or products can actually be life-threatening to certain groups of people. Here I took an example where these car crashes test were made with an average male. And when it was found out that actually, because of these tests have been only made with an average male, actually these car crash situations are life-threatening to women and many other people not belonging to this certain group. Another example is also looking at medicine. So who are we testing the medicines that we're uh, producing for the markets? And all in all as well, it, it so when we're not taking DATI into account, it affects on our limitations to grow and scale companies as well. And I would say that any organization who really wants to build best products and best services uh, should be aware of their uh, state of diversity and inclusion, the potential lack of it, and all the risk that it also might cause for, for their business. But when we know all this, when we know the benefits, when we know the risks, why are we still here? Why are we still exclusive? There's not an easy answer on this question, uh, as there's tons of different obstacles that are still in our way to be truly inclusive. One example is, for example, unconscious biases that every single one of us has. This affect on who we hire, who we promote, what decisions are we making, and how are we behaving ourselves. As an example, 
if you put your eyes closed and think of a CEO, an investor, or a developer, who are the people who come to your mind? And it's important to be aware of this because this affects on our behaviors and, and how we interact with everyone. When also looking, not just these things uh, mentioned here on this slide, but also looking at different data and research, it's very clear that we have a lot of work to be done uh, to make the tech industry also more diverse and inclusive. I took here a very recent example from Unconventional Ventures report, very recently launched, uh, which highlighted that if looking only Nordics, the capital that was raised in 2019, 93% of this capital went to all male teams, whereas only 1% of the capital went to all women teams and 6% for mixed teams. And gender is just a one factor. There's also a second example from Atomico State of European uh, Tech Report from last year where, for example, this uh, self-identified ethnicity was taken into account when looking who are the people who are founding the companies in Europe. And that big line there, which has most of the responses, is presenting white people, white and Caucasian. And those smaller ones are presenting, for example, Asian people, black people, uh, or for example, Hispanic. But this is just not a tech industry problem. There's a lot of things that are also affecting on working life just here in Finland. And one example is that based on this uh, study, uh, Finland is also among the most racist countries in the whole European Union. There's also other kind of researches, for example, to say that Finland is also among the most gender segregated countries in the whole Europe, which means that we still have jobs that are either for women or for men. And this also have a direct effect of also salaries and what people are earning as well. And when thinking what these results, what these researches are also showing us, there's a lot of concrete things that these are affecting. One very interesting study uh, made in Sweden was comparing that how male and female entrepreneurs are described by venture capitalists. And when looking only this gender factor here, where, for example, male are seen as young and promising, then on the other hand, women are described as young and inexperienced. Another example is when male are described as aggressive, but a really good entrepreneurs. Their women are ex uh, described as enthusiastic, but weak. And what all these results do is that 50% of women who work in tech industry leave the industry before the age of 35. And when looking at the reasons for this, one very big major reason is of non-inclusive work culture. So what can we do? What can every individual or what can organizations do to make things better? First of all, it's important to understand that inclusion is not just a state of mind, something that you just support. It really requires actions from both individuals and from organizations. And this includes that organizations need to take this into account in every function that they're working. It's not just the role of a specific team, function, uh, or one person who would be responsible of the whole organization on DNI topics. But it's something that both internally and externally should be considered of, for example, 
on our leadership practices, on how we're designing the products and services, how are we recruiting people, or how we are designing our marketing and communications. And to share you some ideas where to get started, I concluded you a list of eight steps. First one being, everyone can start the conversation and raise awareness on these topics. Secondly, everyone uh, in the organizations can review their diversity metrics. And this does not only mean that you're looking, for example, a gender in the whole company level, but really looking that who are the people leading this organization? Who are the people working in our product development? Who are the people serving our customers? Third, measuring inclusion. As I mentioned before, inclusion is the subjective experience of every individual. And none of, none of the organization can say that they are truly inclusive, or at least if they do so, I would also challenge to, to see that, what is the data on the background and are they really measuring that? Fourth point is different trainings. So when raising awareness on these topics and the importance of them, uh, you can organize or participate on training such as unconscious biases or just learning more on the different aspects of diversity and inclusion. Fifth, pay attention to your brand. So what are the visuals and images that you're using? What is the communication and different language that you're using? Six points, review your practices and processes. How is your organization working? Who are the ones that get responsibility? Who are the ones that get promoted? What are the practices of hiring people? How are we leading people in our organization? Seven, building diversity and inclusion strategy and action plan. This helps to first of all find a focus and make this work to be a strategic one. But it also supports to have the needed resources of advancing these topics and putting also some timelines for them. And eight, don't forget to advance inclusion. If you don't focus on building inclusive culture, the diversity in your organization will walk away. And I wanted lastly to, to end this presentation with one of my favorite uh, quotes from Brené Brown, uh, which was from Nordic Business Forum from last fall. I will read this one loud. If you cannot talk about gender, ethnicity, or other aspects of diversity and inclusion, you cannot lead in five years. If you are not having uh, difficult conversations about hard topics that make you uncomfortable, that is exactly the defin definition of privilege. That was all from me. Uh, thank you that I was able to be here today to, to speak for you. And if you want to find out more about Inclusive and what we do, you can follow us on social media and you can find also more information on our website. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.